I'm wondering how many different topics there were. And that's what Jason couldn't cheat. So far, those are the only two I've heard. I've heard like five so far. No, college boy is out of pocket because I got the Gilded Age. I just stared at my screen. I said, um. <laughs> I know a lot of people got my FS Destiny as well. For the Gov one, there was, it said that 17,000 people started their test and dropped out of it. Wow. Like without even doing anything, like they looked at it, opened it up, just kind of stared at their screen and then closed it and didn't even attempt to answer it. That's a mood though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Did it like not start your guys's cameras? You don't have to put it on. I don't care. I'm just wondering how every single person has no camera on. Except I'm me. just over here eating my pineapple. Once I finish, I'll, I'll join. Okay. Well, it's okay because Cyphers has his on now, so everything's great. Yeah. Okay. Except all I see is his window blinds and his hair. Can you? Oh, what's up? Can you see me? Don't, I think you don't miss my hair. All right. Well, people are still logging on, so I'll give them another couple minutes. Thank you guys for those of you who joined us today. I'm here for the pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> now today it's, I'm going to go over some stuff that will kind of help just to kind of give an outline of everything, what to expect in your exam, um, overall like structure of it. And then there's two questions on there, what they're going to look like, and then um, like go over a sample one like I did with Senate yesterday. I miss your ads. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm good. It's been a while. I know it has. You sound sick, or are you just just now? Oh, you just finished your A push test, didn't you? I don't have A push. Oh, you don't? I just have allergies. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it might have been rough too, and it's windy. So, oh God, Chen. Hi, Chen. If we're playing charades, I'm terrible at it, and I don't know what you're spelling. Vivian, your mic's off. <laughs> All right, I'll get started. I don't know if anyone else is joining. Uh, so yeah, I'll go over. So I posted a lot of the stuff I'm going to go over today. I posted it online already this morning. Uh, so I don't know if you had a chance to check. I know a lot of you were like crying in the club before your A-push test. And so that's the last thing you were doing was checking Google Classroom. And then you were crying in the club after your A-push test. So um, hopefully it went well for some of you. For Cyphers, it went well. Um, meaning if Cyphers did okay, you guys should have done okay. Yeah. Okay. So I posted this one. This is just kind of a final overview because if if you didn't realize College Board was kind of giving us an update every single day um, of here's this, now we're gonna change it to this, now we're gonna change it to this. And so it was a hot mess for all your teachers. Um, and so this is kind of a final one that someone made that I was fortunate to find that kind of outlines the whole thing. The biggest thing you need to note on this, this is for someone that's in mountain time zone. Your exam is at 11 a.m., not at 1 p.m. So uh, I just realized I'm not sharing my screen. I'm an idiot. Uh, Last minute exam update. There we go. All right, can you guys see this now? Yeah. Okay, so um, right here, it says the exam is at 1 p.m. Your exam is not, your exam is at 11 a.m. Um, over the weekend, you should get something that kind of gives you an exam e-ticket that's gonna have your information that you need on there. Did, how early did you guys receive it for a push? Hours before. How long? Sorry, I didn't hear it. 48 hours before. 48 hours before. Okay, cool. So you're going to get it about the same thing. So ours is at 1 a.m. on Monday. So you should probably get it around Saturday afternoon would be my guess. So I'd check Saturday afternoon to check Saturday evening to see uh, what you have out there. For your exam, it's the same way as if you guys just took a push. Um, if you haven't taken one yet, there's a couple ways you can enter it. The one that I recommend, copy and paste. You're not gonna have to make a graph on our exam. So we did a lot of practice in class and everything for it. You will not have to make a graph. Um, it's basically gonna be typing 
or handwritten or whatnot. But so my recommendation would be uh, a Google Doc and copy and paste it from there into College Board. So that way you can just do that. Um, so it goes over right here, the different options that you can have. So you can either upload a pictures or PDF documents. If you decide you wanna upload a picture from your phone, Miss um, McNeil posted something on how to change the format from your phone because your iPhone format uploads it into a different format than College Board likes. And so people who are running into problems, it has to do with the formatting thing. So you need to change your settings in your phone beforehand. Uh, but if you do copy and paste, you're not gonna run into you do. Okay. Um, question wise, there's two questions that we kind of already talked, I've mentioned to you. It's gonna cover units one through six and we were fortunate. We ended up at unit six, pretty, we were one week short of unit six when we left school. So pretty much everything that we could be on the exam, we already went over in class, which is nice. Uh, and we re reviewed the first four units um, during the whole quarantine thing, just to kind of refresh that. Um, but there's nothing that we haven't covered really in class that can be nothing. There will be no evolution, there will be no ecology, which is nice, okay? Question-wise, there's two of them. Your first one is question one for the FRQ. It's a longer one. Uh, 25 minutes, then you get five minutes to respond to it. This is going to be a four-part question, and I'm going to go over what that's going to look like. And then question two, it's going to be uh, a shorter one. So you only get, for this one, you get 15 minutes to answer it, and then tw uh, five minutes to submit it after that. You can have your formula sheet if you need that. You're probably not going to need much of it on there, um, but you can have that out if you need that, or you can have it open to another page. You can have your notes. You can have study guides, assignments, textbooks, all that stuff. Um, you cannot, it, don't take it right next to someone and go over your answers, but exactly like how you've seen for a push, there's a good chance you're going to have a different question than someone who you're right next to. So, uh, so this kind of goes over this as far as cheating and stuff like that. Uh, just don't do it. The questions I don't think are going to be as hard as you think they are. Someone and I went through them yesterday and after we went through the long question, it was actually, they were pretty confident in it yesterday. So, that question, any questions so far? Anyone have anything? Uh, yes. Um, hey Cole, what up dude? So I read that, uh, especially for like the other AP exams, I have AP English as well. And they said that um, for the questions, they would be a little lenient. How lenient is that like answer wise? It was, just, I don't know, answer wise, I think, well, the questions, in my opinion, so question one and question two on the AP exam are the longer questions. They're both 10 point questions. Um, question one is always the easiest one, in my opinion. And so you guys got question one out of the exam. And so you got the easier of the two ones. And then question two, which is otherwise known as question four on the exam, it's also an easier one because it says, okay, here's this conceptual process. Like, let's say photosynthesis, all right? Uh, so it has this big conceptual idea and then it says, let's say there's a problem in here and let's say, oh, there's an enzyme that disrupts the process of photosynthesis when now we can break down water. How is that going to affect the whole process? Uh, and so it's kind of question four has to do with conceptual analysis and cause and effect. And if there was a problem in there, how is that going to affect it? And so both of these, in my opinion, aren't super, super, super content heavy. It may look like it is when you look at the question and you see like a whole page long worth of stuff and you're like, oh my God, like I don't even, I, I know some of these words, so that's cool, like that's winning. Um, the majority of those big words and everything, you don't even need to answer the question. It's gonna be looking at the data points. Okay, can I look at this? Can I figure out what is this data table showing me or what is this graph showing me or what is this diagram showing me and what can I draw from that? So it's, something like 75% of the question is just that you don't need to know any content knowledge to answer that question. Really? And so we'll go over one of them that I went over with someone yesterday. Uh, so like, um, I was doing that, uh, all those practice FRQs you posted, yep. like from the previous exams and how you modified them. Yep. And um, what I was trying to mean was that like, for the first, like the one on the first page, Mm -hmm. Part A, um, it said like, oh, how deletion of a gene can change the fitness of an organism. I said that it would decrease their survivability, but in the answer queue, in the answer um, in answer sheet, it like 
listed like oh it'll be able to reproduce more efficiently and stuff so that's that's the kind of thing i'm wondering like do you have to be specific with those things? so normally so that was just a sample one that a teacher made uh saying like here's the exam here's the sample answer when you get the real rubric there's usually multiple answers to it uh, yeah i read the multiple answers on there and they were more specific than my yeah, so the one you saw was a little bit more specific just to kind of give you an idea of are you on the right track whereas the other one it usually gives several options of right answers so you could say like it will increase um the chances of offspring being born or it'll say and it'll say why or it'll say it'll decrease this this thing um and it'll say why and so usually they give several options on there because okay. there's more than one way to skin a cat and so the ap exam it's usually a little bit more, or it'll be a little bit more lenient than what you saw in that sample one that I gave. Okay. Okay, so that's actually a good question. Um, anything else before I go into the scoring thing on there? No, no, great. What a great audience. Um, okay, so then if I look at this, how it says the weight, 65%, so the majority of it is that question one. So you've got to, interpret and evaluate experimental results. That's the data analysis. So what, one thing I very much recommend, last week I posted a Kahoot that went over data tables and stuff. Um, you may have opened it and you may have thought like, oh my gosh, I don't know what any of this stuff is and just probably closed it. I recommend taking that thing, like trying to eliminate all the sounds and distractions around you and everything and really look at it and see, can I figure out what this data table or what this data set or this graph or anything is showing you? Um, because that's guaranteed what question one is gonna have on there. It's going to give you some form of a data table or data set, and you're gonna to need to analyze the results from that thing and figure out what it's showing you. So that Kahoot that I gave you is gonna be really, really beneficial because those are all problems that have been previously given out on an AP exam as far as data sets for question one. Um, so if you can look at those and figure that out, it's gonna be really, really helpful. Then you need to identify and justify experimental design. Uh, I posted a video this morning uh, just kind of going over everything from experimental design. So it's going to say, like, here's this data set where, for instance, if I looked at, can you guys see this one right here? The one, where I just, the picture of Long Island? Yeah, I, I did that one. <laughs> okay, so it's saying, it gives you this background right here. And so question part A, it's talking about describing the activity of here and describe the function of this gene in here. So we've got this gene that's going to help pump out salt or if we're in salty areas, it's gonna help pump out water and it gives you the background for that in here. And part B of it, and why I'm talking about this question right here, it says, identify the testable question, identify the dependent variable, and identify the independent variable. So that's why on here it says, uh, identify and justify experimental designs. And so that video I posted earlier, it goes over all the parts of the experiment. It goes over, how do you write a question? So for instance, how does the independent variable affect the dependent variable? Or as far as that one right there, your question would be, how does the salt solution affect the presence of the LAP94 gene? You don't even really know what the LAP94 gene does to answer that question. Um, that is, when you tell me what is the independent variable, that's the thing that I am myself and, uh, or the scientist is changing or the thing that is being changing. The dependent variable is gonna be, uh, what is responding to that? So if I change the salt solution, okay, now the uh, frequency of that gene is gonna change because if it's saltier, it needs to pump out more water or it needs to put more water, okay? Um, can you tell me like what a control group is? Can you tell me what uh, the hypothesis is? Can you tell me what a null hypothesis is? So that's what that part is right there um, for the identify and justify experimental designs. Um, analyze data, we already talked about that. And then the make prediction. So it's saying like, if, for instance, let's look at this one right here, okay? Um, so we've got these right here, these sites. So it says like, right here it says site one, site two, site three, site four. So they went through and they started sampling all these different sites right here. So, and they looked at it and they said, okay, well, they're looking at muscles and it said these laps are found in all living organisms been associated with response to immune muscles in the salinity. There are enzymes that remove amino acids from protein. They release free amino acids in the cytosol. To investigate the evolution of the laps in the wild, um, 
the researcher sampled adult mussels from several sites. Basically, this thing's gonna help regulate water in here, okay? And so they looked at all these and they started sampling the mussels and they said, okay, well, what's the frequency of them having this LAP94 frequency in here or this LAP94 gene? And what's the relation to that with the amount of salt that's in the water? And so if they were to form a, so right here, identify a testable question on here. The testable question would be, how does the salt concentration affect the LAP94 frequency? Okay, so, cause that's the thing that's changing is, that's being changed is, how does salinity change and how does the lap 94 frequency respond to that? Because if it's a higher salinity, it's going to need to pump out more water. Okay. And so right here, the dependent variable, um, the thing that's responding to the thing being changed is going to be the lap 94 frequency. And the thing that is being intentionally is going to be the salinity. So that's, that's what that's going over right there as far as the independent and dependent variable that's going to pretty much guaranteed be on your exam. So I would highly recommend watching that video I gave you this morning. It is not Bozeman and it is not Khan Academy. So some of you might be excited about that. Questions? None? None? What's the null hypothesis? I forgot what that was. So null hypothesis saying there is no effect of blank on blank. So for instance, if this one, if it were to say, identify the null hypothesis. So your hypothesis might be, how does salinity affect LAP94 frequency? Based on this, if we were to go through here and it would say the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis where this would be, um, salinity concentrations have no effect on LAP94 frequency. Okay, where, so, so like they're trying to prove it wrong? Yeah, so a null hypothesis is saying the, the independent variable has no effect on the dependent variable. That's what the null hypothesis will always be. Okay. Okay. So if you looked at one of the other ones where it was talking about one of the hormones and does exercise affect that hormone, then, and that, that question right there has a null hypothesis on there, it would be the exercise has no effect on this. Or if you want to, like, for instance, just make a, a dumb one, like, how does fact, uh, sleep affect your energy level? Uh, the null hypothesis would be the amount of sleep has no effect on the energy level. An alternative hypothesis would be like, and so you'll have two. Um, alternative would be an increase in sleep will increase an energy level. So it's saying this will have this positive effect on it, this will have this negative effect on it. Where a null is saying it will have no effect on it. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. Okay. Um, cool. Any questions? Anything before you go on? This is weird, just kind of talking into a computer. Uh, so question two, it's half the amount. Okay. Uh, so it gives you a biological phenomenon and it wants you to, so it says in this thing, you're going to be asked to like describe the concept, uh, explain what's going on in that concept, predict any cause or effects from there and then justify or like support the justification on that prediction. Um, so it's basically say, here's this concept. So like I said, that simple one, let's say there's an enzyme that doesn't allow water to be brought into a plant. How's that going to affect the rate of photosynthesis um, or predict how that will affect the rate of photosynthesis. And you would say it would decrease the rate of photosynthesis because now we can't drive the light reaction because water is used during used to split water during the light reaction. So that right there is where I'd make that prediction by saying like, oh, the rate of photosynthesis would go down and justifying it by saying sunlight can't be used to break water during the light dependent reaction. So that's what that's talking about right there. Okay. Um, so yeah, errors. So if you have any problems, um, there's the, just some information on what you need to do. If you've got to do a makeup date time, it's going to be June 3rd at 1 p.m. So it's two hours before this because this is going to be, or this is central time. Yeah, so two hours behind this. Okay. Questions on that one? None? All right. So the words that were on there. So if you saw, if you look through like this document right here, you see how there's these bold words. These are all task verbs. So like describe, describe, identify, predict, explain, justify. So all the ones that could be on your exam are on this document right here. So it says like right here, question one is gonna be interpreting, evaluating experimental results. And you're gonna have 25 minutes to complete it. 
in part A, you're either going to have to describe, explain, identify, or describe or explain. And so it tells you for describe, here's what you need to do, here's what you don't want to do. Okay. Um, for explain what you want to do, what you don't want to do. So I'd go through and kind of uh, review these words. If it might be helpful, maybe you save this page. And so when you're taking your exam and it asks you, we need you to identify this, you have this kind of sheet that tells you, okay, here's what identify means. Or if they ask you to justify, here's what this means. Okay. So I think this could be a helpful one right here. So, um, cause it goes through all those task verbs. And so that way, you know, what do those task verb mean when you actually have to do that exam? So maybe save it in another tab or something like that. That way, if you have to refer to it, you have that. It's not considered cheat by looking at this. This is part of your notes. Okay. That's if you don't want to print it, but obviously you can print it if you want to print it. Okay. Questions. Concerns, comments? None? Okay. Uh, so if you're, this is something I posted two weeks ago. This is all those practice FRQs that are on there. If it has anything to do with anatomy, uh, it won't ask you like specific parts of any body parts. It won't ask you anything on evolution. It won't ask you anything on ecology. So two of these questions on here when I was going through them look like they have something on there about anatomy. So you wouldn't get a question like that. A big question that I got yesterday is these error bars. So do you remember what those error bars mean? No, great. Uh, here's a good question that talks about it. So this is the one where we were talking about, we're looking at blood and we're looking at a specific hormone in there. So we're looking at exercise effects on blood prolactin level. So it's saying, it wants to know how does, does exercise have a specific effect on prolactin levels? And so right here, it talks about how does it transfer? Well, it's a hormone, it's gonna go slow, it's gotta go through the cell membrane. Part B says, state the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis, the question was, how does exercise affect prolactin levels? And remember, we said the null hypothesis says the independent variable has no effect on the dependent variable. So your null hypothesis would be that exercise has no effect on prolactin levels. And it says, justify the, the use without exercise treatment as the control in the study design. So we wanted to see without exercise, how does prolactin levels change? Is it significant? And what we did is we did, they did this exam and they've got these error bars here. These are what's called the standard error means or two SEM or two standard error of, uh, of the mean. And so what happens is this is telling you basically how accurate that data was. If you wanted to see, was there a significant difference? These bars cannot overlap. So for instance, if I look at with exercise and without exercise, if you notice these bars, they overlap. These bars, so right here, there's no, if they were to ask to draw conclusions on this, uh, does prolactin have an effect, or does exercise have an effect on prolactin levels uh, if you exercise? No, it does not, and the reason why these bars overlap. For there to not be an effect, that bar would maybe have to be, it would have to end right here, and the um, standard of the means could not, the highest of this could not go above the lowest of this. Because if it does, that means there's overlap, and that means there is not a significant enough difference. So uh, one of the questions right here says, you need to talk, or you need to justify, oh, right here, using the evidence from the specific treatments, describe the effect exercise has on the release of prolactin. Your answer for that would be, exercise does not have a significant effect on the release of prolactin. The reason why, because the two standard error means bars overlap, therefore there's not a significant difference enough and the, there's enough of a relation within that, okay? So there's not a, the exercise does not have that. And so that's part C right there, okay? That was a big thing that a lot of people forgot about was those standard error and the means bars because we haven't done those in a while. Um, if you wanted to see one, what it would look like, that had it where there is a significant difference. For instance, this one right here. Um, without going into the background of it, if we were to say, does so-and-so have an effect on when you're awake or when you're asleep? You could sit for this one, you could say, yes, there is an effect because if you look at the standard error and the means bars for awake versus when they're asleep, there's no overlap whatsoever. So there is a significant difference. So there is not a correlation between these two. And so there's something causing an effect on that. And so with that one, yes, there is a big effect on there, okay? Any other questions on that? 
on the FRQs or anything? Um, Gerard? Yes. If there's a bunch of different parts, are you just going to type it all in one document? Yep, you can type it all in one document. My, just for the sake of the AP reader, I break it apart into part A, part B, part C, part D, just for them to read it. Um, but you don't have to. You can still get full credit if you just put it in one big paragraph. Um, but I would just put like question one, part A, and then just put A, and then like hit the enter key, and then start typing your answer for part A, and then part B, start typing your answer for part B. Um, it makes it easier for the AP reader. Um, but if you just put it in one big paragraph, you can still get full credit. And then I just copy and paste it all in there because, like I said, you're not going to have to make any graphs. You're not going to have to do anything like that. Um, but like I said, the biggest thing for this, for the most part on here, you, if you look at all these questions on here, all of them are four part questions. The only one that you really kind of have to show that you know the content is part A. Part B, part C, and part D are, can I look at this data table? Can I figure out what this data table is showing me? Um, and kind of justify that. So I'm gonna go back to one more on this. Sorry, I'm jumping around. Um, that lap 94 one, I really like that question. So right here it's saying like, here's the different sites. Site one, the lap 94 frequency was 13. Site two, it's 16. Site three, it's 25. One of the questions right here says, um, you have to make a prediction. Uh, let me close this. It says, part C says, based on the data, describe the most likely effect of salinity in the lap 94. So if you look through that, okay, what do you think the effects are of salinity on the lap 94 frequency? Do you see any correlation between those two things? So if you're, if you're looking at it, you should see as salinity goes up, the lap 94 frequency goes up. Okay, there it is, cool. Uh, so that was your description right there. Prediction now. Now it's saying predict that the lap 94 allele frequency at a sample site between one and two in the Long Island. So it's saying here's site one, here's site two. Make a prediction on what you think the lap 94 frequency would be. The correct answer is anything above 13 and anything below 16. Um, that'd be the right answer. So maybe you said 14, maybe you said 15, anything like that. Those would both be the right answers. Um, and so let's just say you got part B and you got part C right um, out of this. That's still a 50%. And if you remember the AP exam to get a three, you need a 50%. So it's not like your normal traditional exam where to pass it, you need a 70%, um, which is why I'm telling you like that right there, you could answer part B and part C without knowing a single, like you could have not sat in biology class or you could have slept through bio class all year long and not learned a single thing, but you could still answer part B and part C just by looking at that data table and asking yourself, what is this really showing me? So I could take a chemistry kid who knows how to read a data table and they should be able to get 50% on this question right here without knowing a single thing about biology and 50% will get you a three. And that's why I'm, I was telling, I was writing online that I think of any year, the fact that they chose question one as their biggest question is going to massively work in your favor and of any year for the AP exam, this is the year that most people should probably pass it, which is why I have a lot of confidence in you guys. Um, and I think you should too, because it, I don't think it's going to be as hard as you think it is. And I think you can definitely earn points pretty easily, um, even if you have no clue about unit four or have no clue about unit three, there should be some points on there that you should be able to get, because I think, I have confidence in all of you of reading a data table or reading a graph or something like that. That's very reassuring. Thank you, Mr. Jeanette. Well, sorry, most of you, maybe not ciphers, uh, but most of you. <laughs> yeah, that's why I wouldn't, I, I think you should, I, like I said, on there, I wrote this morning, go into it with an open mind. I think you're, it'll go better than you think it will. It's not gonna be, any of the free response questions we had in class, I think are much harder than the ones that you're going to get on the AP exam because the free response questions you had in class were like free response question two on the real exam, which is not on this one, which is a longer one, which you have to graph and it's a lot more content heavy. You had very content heavy questions in class. These are not content heavy questions that you're gonna get on the AP exam. So I think it's, it worked in your favor. I think you guys are very fortunate. Wow. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. Which is why I said I'm anxious to hear how it's going to go on Monday. And so 
I was telling someone yesterday who I studied with, I think one of the most beneficial things you could do is go back and do that Kahoot that I posted because that Kahoot was all previously released data sets from AP exams. So it'll expose you to stuff like, oh, okay, I might see this, what is this showing me? Um, and then if you get that and you see an answer and you're like, I don't get how they got that, shoot me an email, shoot me a, send me something on Remind. Remind's the easiest. Uh, because right now, every company that has ever had your email address wants you to know how they're responding to COVID-19. So we get like 800 emails a day. Um, so Remind is the easiest way for me to respond. Um, if you have any questions like, how did you get this? You can just send me a picture of it and I can explain it to you. Hey, Gerard. Gerard, is there like a possibility no. that some of those questions will be on this bio or like no they're gonna be completely different they'll be different because i don't think they'll ever reuse questions uh -huh. um they might have some that are similar very similar because some of the data sets are pretty similar but i don't think you'll have any that are the exact same i don't think they ever do that because some people get paid stupid amounts of money to write ap questions all right so ace what's up kiddo um it's, it's kind of topic but like you know how I don't know if it was true or not, but like I saw it somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it was, but do we need to take the pretest in order to get the, the code to take the? No, they're going to email you the code probably Saturday afternoon. I would take it just so you're, if you haven't taken one, um, I don't know, could someone who took a push today, do you feel it was beneficial for you to do, to go through and take one of those practice tests before, just so you're familiar with submitting it and everything? You mean the demo? Yeah, did you do the demo? Oh, you, have you taken an AP test yet, J. Cole? No, I just did uh, the demo. Sasser or Alma or anyone who's taken an AP test already. Uh, I need help. Did you do the demo one? Yeah. Do you feel like that was helpful? Yeah, because at first I had no clue how we we're going to submit it. I knew we had to paste something in, but I didn't know how we were going to paste. Because at first I thought you could just write it in the box, but you can't. You okay. have to physically write it on a doc. So I think it kind of made me realize the structure. Okay. That's good. So there you go. It's, it would, they said that they, they took theirs an hour and a half ago, um, which is probably why some of them have their cameras off because their eyes are still red and watery um, <laughs> and they're wiping their tears away. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no, but they said it was helpful. So I, I would highly recommend it. That way you're not going into it blind because after you're done, let's say you make this big, beautiful crafted thing and you write this beautiful response and you're like, oh, heck yeah, I, I know for sure I got at least eight out of the 10 points, which would get you a five. Uh, and then you're not able to submit it. It just kind of shot yourself in the foot because you didn't go there and take that practice one. So I recommend <laughs> it. Uh, Gerard, Thank you. The, who said, who said, oh, Angelis. Um, The demo also confirms that your browser is compatible with the test. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because I read this morning, some people who are doing copy and pasting and running into problems, it's because their browser is not updated. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would highly recommend going through the demo. Um, it doesn't hurt. It'll just take you a couple minutes. So yeah. Anyone have anything else they want to talk about? Anything good? Um, just a quick question about uh, osmosis, because I feel like that's the main thing that I was trying to understand. Yeah, but um, just uh, for this one right here, like on your screen, uh, yeah. I was a little confused on the the effect of the hypotonic environment on the cell. So is it that the water moves from uh, low solute to high solute, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so if it were in a really hypertonic environment, um, it's gonna lose water. And so it's gonna have to try, it, it, naturally the water is gonna wanna go out. So that thing's gonna have to do, put a lot of effort into maintaining its water balance um, because of that. Whereas if it were in a very low salt area um, or it were in a hypotonic environment, water's gonna wanna rush into it. And so it would have to spend a lot of energy trying to pump water out so that way it doesn't have too much water come in. So high solute, it would wanna, or if it was in a really salty area, it's gonna wanna try and keep all of its water in. If it's in a very, very low salty area, it's gonna have to pump water out because water's trying to move in. It's okay. kind of like 
the whole thing of if you pour salt on a snail, you kill it because you dehydrate it and the snail's not able to keep its water in. Mm. Which is okay. kind of, but, but yeah. Hey. No. Anything else? Anyone else? DeMarcus, I see you have your hand up. But yeah, yeah, so say like somebody like, you know, wasn't recording, like not recording, sorry. <laughs> was it like studying? Do you think they should still take the test? I think you should still definitely take the test because like I said, we just went through question one and you could have not known a single thing. Like you could have not showed up to the entire year of biology and still got half of that question right. Um, just by being able to look at a data set and figure out what's on there, even if you didn't study, even if you, yeah, didn't do any, let's say you, let's say you left the um, school with an A and you knew your grade couldn't go down, so you didn't do any studying whatsoever. Um, I still think you still have a chance of passing that exam because you could still get about half of it right without knowing a single thing of biology, which would still get you a three. Still got it. Yeah, you still got a question. Your hand is still raised. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Oh, you can keep it up if you really want to. <laughs> I just forgot. Yeah. So, um, do what? What's our idea, Cole? Uh, um, so for the testable question and the null hypothesis, they're based on the dependent and independent variable. Yeah. So your testable question is almost always going to be the easiest way to write it out is. How does the independent variable affect the dependent variable? And then null hypothesis is that the independent variable does not affect the dependent variable. Exactly. Okay. Whereas you're- I think I should be able to get that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's what I was saying. One of the best things you could do is go through and make sure you watch the video that I posted this morning, just so you know all your experimental design stuff okay. um, about that. And if it were to, it might ask you, uh, what is an alternative hypothesis? You could say that, um, the independent variable has this effect on the dependent variable or the independent variable will increase. If you increase the independent variable, you'll increase the dependent variable or if you increase the independent variable, you'll decrease it. Um, so yeah, alternative is saying something has this effect on it uh, where the null hypothesis is saying it has no effect on it. Okay. Anything else before I know half of you want to go back to sleep because you were forced to wake up too early today? How have you been, Mr. Drads? I've been okay. How have you been? Um, I've gone insane. You're going insane? I've, I've dyed my hair. You what? Did you cut your hair, you said? Yeah, I dyed my hair. Oh, you tied it. I thought you said you cut it. I was like, what? Because I know Francisco Ruiz cut his hair. No, I would have cut my hair. <laughs> no, I've been good. It's just staying occupied. I'm ready for all of this to be over. Me too. We don't know what's going to happen in the fall yet. Unfortunately, um, yeah, it's all glum. As the CSUs and UCs basically said, almost everything for them is going to be all online. Yeah, my um, my older brother, uh, he had to come back from a UC Irvine because of the virus. Yep. The same thing for fall because they're closing for fall. Yeah. I yeah. So. Um, and I heard some of them, the only thing that they're going to have is some courses, which may be like their lab courses, they might stagger them. Cause I golf with a guy who teaches at MJC and he said that his is almost all going to be online, but right. you have to like maybe stagger his lab classes for MJC. Wow. I'd be super mad if I was a senior and then that happened. Like I feel terrible for seniors who that happened to. Sure. But yeah, it's crazy times. Nobody on earth has ever seen something like this. So 2020 has been a, a, a great, ro a amazing roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> I want to get off the ride now. 2020 has been a hot mess since the get go, man. We almost had World War Three. We've got murder hornets. We've got all this stuff. Uh, have you seen those like uh, posts? like the fashion styles for each month oh my god yeah like january is the military clothing uh february is like it was uh, kobe the february was like a i think a firefighter because of the australia virus oh yeah May is a hazmat suit because of the virus and then uh uh what month is it today april yeah <laughs> april is um like the bee suit because of the hornets yeah 
So it's been a mess, man. Yeah, and then we have an earthquake today. I didn't know that, but cool. cool. I just need to feel it. At 4 a.m. Yeah, what I did not I didn't know earthquake. I don't know. Half you guys were probably awake because you, some of you don't go to bed until 6 a.m., you told me. So. Yeah. My, my sleep schedule is getting destroyed right now because, like, usually I sleep at, like, 1030 at the latest, so now I'm always sleeping at midnight, and it's I don't like it. <laughs> hey, that's still early compared to most people. I text really? someone one time at 530 because they asked me for something. I text them at 530 in the morning on Remind, and they were saying they were just getting ready to go to bed. So midnight is pretty early. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much done for all the content. If you guys want to stay around and chat, you can, but I'm done content wise. So if you want to go to sleep or everything, don't feel obligated to hang around. Um, please email me or reach out to me if you have any questions or anything. If you want, I can put something together Monday morning. If you need another video chat to go over anything, let me know. Um, I could put something together at like maybe nine or something. I know that's early and a bunch of you just rolled your eyes at that. Um, but your exam is at 11. So some of you might have to wake up early. Mm. So. I usually wake up around uh, eight or nine. So I think I'm fine. <laughs> that's good. Cool. So anyone have anything else? I like your wall. My black wall. This is my black room that my wife told me she wanted to paint black and I told her she's ridiculous and why on earth would we paint a room black and I actually really, really like it. <laughs> it looks blue to me. I can't. <laughs> no, it's like, it's my exercise. It's well part of the exercise room because the bike is right there. Um, but no, it's like black, black. Oh, okay. I retract my statement. Yeah. So, oh, you have a red wall. <laughs> yeah, we have a red wall in my house too. Do you? All red. No. I've got a maroon, I've got a navy room, or I've got a gray room, a navy room, and then this is the black room. Guys want to see my room. <laughs> sure, Jay. Jay Cole, let's go. Hi. Oh, you have white walls. Yeah, very white walls. Yeah. I have a bunk bed too. I just I recently got it. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. Ooh. Anyone have anything else before I let you guys go sleep? Will you continue to do like the uh, the optional questions? Do you want me to keep doing them? Because I felt like it was just people felt like it was annoying. I didn't. Because I'll keep posting them. Um, I just felt like people were like, felt obligated to answer, even though it was optional. They're like, "Oh man, like what if I have to do this?" And so I didn't want to like overwhelm you guys. I just forgot to do them. So. Oh, like well, it was completely optional. There was no, you didn't have to do them. It was just, yeah, I didn't, but I, I like them there. Like, I like the option to do them. Yeah. I didn't know if people enjoyed it or if it was just like an obligation and people just felt like they had to do it as like, and it was a nuisance. Uh, I, mean, no, I felt like I had to do it. <laughs> no, that's good. All right. I'll post more of them then. Yeah. I, it gave me something interesting and it gave me something to like read and hear about you guys since you guys have, like, I don't see you. So, this is cool. Fun. All right, it's lunchtime. <laughs> Anyone have anything else? No. All right, post this online. Like I said, watch the experimental design video if you have any questions. Email me if you have any questions. Shoot me a, rem a remind message if you have any questions. Um, yeah. All right, nothing. All right, I'm out. Bye, Mr. Jarad. All right, bye. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Don't bye. 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 Thanks, Jarad. Thank you for coming. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Brianna. Bye. Please shave. Did I shave? No, look at this. <laughs> it's so Please gross. Please take care of yourself. No, I can't wait because I got three more months to let this grow and this grow. Oh my god, you, I don't know, never mind, I'm not going to say anything. J. Cole hasn't shaved in three months either. <laughs> <laughs> you mean 17 years? <laughs> <laughs> That's fired. Wow. <laughs>
Yeah, I'll shave this when I sh when I get a haircut, which I should do because my neighbor is a barber. So, really, yeah, I could. Mom, just... so you have the hookup and you're not. You have the yeah. What the heck? Yeah, I'm I doing didn't... it myself. I didn't even like, think of it. And so, yeah, I let him use my gym too for like stuff if he has questions or needs help with anything or wants to buy anything. So he has me in favor. So, all right, y'all have fun. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.